I'm on track. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, welcome back, man. It's your boy Just Global Unlimited Podcast, and uh, we're here today with a, with a, with a, uh, a special guest from, from the city of Trenton. But before we get into that, uh, I'm gonna make a couple of announcements, man. We're doing the podcast in a new location. Um, we're here at the Briggs Library on Greenwood Avenue, uh, working with um, Ms. Howard and Ms. Hope. Um, Howard Healthy Choices, that's the name of the, the program. They're doing work with the kids, after school programs, summer programs, doing all types of stuff like that. You know what I mean, but we're going to be here from now on doing the podcast. And also, we're going to look out because the kids are going to be doing their own podcast real soon. You know what I mean, so I just want to make people aware of that stuff, let people know what's going on in the city. But right now, though, let's get into this. Mm-hmm. We're here with the man himself. And I just I can't ever, ever, ever pronounce your last name. So I'm just going to say Kevin G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you can do the G thing, but um, it's Givinetti. Givinetti. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Welcome back. We had the yeah, uh, man, last, last year with the yeah. first book. Right. I mean, who didn't, mm-hmm. ever, whoever didn't get this one, need to go get it. Because yeah, you need yeah. to read this one before you read this one. Right. You're going to have to. Mm-hmm. Part two. So it took you about, about a year to write the right part two, right? Yeah, uh, actually, when you know, when I put that one out, this was done already. Oh, so yeah, so, you know, I, I, I had some, um, I had some good time to do some editing, you know, you know, I, yeah, I, I got a couple of them done, okay, you know, what I mean, and it's actually uh, teaching me a lot of discipline as far as uh, maybe saving things, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so people have a habit of, yeah, when I, to put it out there, right. it's the gratification, yeah, gratification. Exactly. You know, I had a problem with that too, like as far as with, you know, money and other things that you need to put to the side and, and hold on ice, you know what I mean? Right. I learned it through this process, you know, because when you got this type of material, you know, you want to put it out there, but you contain yourself, you know, for the sake of the business and, Everything else, you know, that's supposed to go in. Because the first one, it was actually like I, I read the first one mm-hmm. um, when you gave it to me. It took me a couple weeks to read it because of the work and everything I've been going on. But mm-hmm. every time I picked it up, I ain't want to put it back down. Right, you right. I mean, the, the yeah. story you put together, you know and I'm saying I can visualize mm-hmm. everything inside the jail. Right. The streets you talked about here in Trenton. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, either, either I know of them or I've been on them. It's probably pretty much not, not one street in Trenton I haven't been on. I've been right. on my life. So mm-hmm. you know what I mean, but the whole concept and the, the, the story behind it. Right. You know what I'm saying was, was was beautiful and it was deep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you killed me at the end. I'm not I'm not gonna do no spoilers because <laughs> people who haven't read it need to read it. Mm. And then, uh the, the end was like, oh man. Mm-hmm. So tell me you made it up, made up for it in part two. <laughs> <laughs> just, just let me know you made up for it in part two. Yeah, I, I made up for I, I made up for it. Um yeah, I made up for it. I think so. Um I'm a fan as well. I mean, I I read it, you know, continuously. And and I feel like you or a lot of people, like sometimes I just pick it up and be like, you know, I might see a email or, you know, a message from somebody and be like, you know what, let me see what this is. Let me, let me see what they talk <laughs> talking about, about, man. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, the way people describe it, like it's like, you know what I mean, everything. So sometimes it, it you know, influences me to, to pick it up again. Like, let me see what they talk about, man. And then when I do pick it up, here we go again. I read through the whole thing again. So when you got something like that, that, you know, that tells me like, yeah, this is something, man, so. I mean, I think I told you before, like, mm-hmm. only person ever, ever one, uh, one of the author ever caught my attention like that was Donald Goyne. Right. I told you that before, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's what this remind me of right. some of the stories that he put together. Mm-hmm. I mean, because, you know, you could relate to him, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, and you visualize everything he was writing about. Right, and that's, that's what made him good and unique and, and we could relate to him because, like he's very descriptive, and somebody else told me that too. Somebody from Brooklyn, matter of fact, um, he said I'm the you know the new Donald Goins. That's what he told me. I mean, I ain't let it go to my head, but I'm just saying that's what he said. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he he gave me that, and I, I accepted it as a compliment. And um, yeah, I, I think it's I think if you can't be descriptive, you know what are you doing? You know what I mean? You have to you know the same reason why I do it. Is um well the actual reason why I love doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. is uh the reason why it is what it is because I want you to feel the same way, you know what I mean? If if, if I'm in a scene and I'm placing myself in that scene, uh, that means I'm doing my job. Right. And right. if you feel the same way, I'm doing my job. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if it, and if I don't feel that way, 
I think it's something I have to go over again until I do feel that, that way. way. Exactly, until you feel that same love mm-hmm. that, the, right. that the uh, person that reads it feels for the, for the material. Exactly. So I'm going to go back to something you just said. Now. So you're saying you, you learn patience by mm-hmm. certain things. And not right. stuff out of. So you're telling me you got more of these lined up, man? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got a lot of them lined up. And they done. And they done? Mm-hmm. So you're just waiting to, to Ready for process. print. Yeah, well, done. you know, I, I can't never... I don't like to say done because to me the edit the editing process is, you know, if you allow it to keep going, it could keep going forever. Right. right you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Especially with somebody who constantly thinks and somebody who might be creative you, enough to do that. Like, oh, right, I need to change this. I need to change right. that. Right. It, it's, it's, it's putting it down and letting it be. Right. There's always room for um, error. You know what I mean? And it may not be error, but for somebody like myself. I could always find something that could be better. And if I get to a level where, all right, this is, it can't get no better than this, right. then that's that's good for me. But um, most of the time I could always, you know, adjust and make it, you know, to me it's all good, but I just, I find room where it could be better. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So the editing process could take a year for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I could... I could actually write a book within a year. I think every book I wrote was it took me about a year. But this one here, um, yeah, it took me about a year to edit it. Okay, so how long did you to write it though? A year. Okay. Mm-hmm. So two year process altogether. Yeah, a little more. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I'll be tweaking it, and yeah. you know what I mean. Is this fun for me? That's what right, I'm right, right, right. I mean, <laughs> some people, you know. I don't know. I think the writing process is a beautiful thing, but if you don't have, you don't put yourself in a position to make it a beautiful thing, you know, it's aggravating, man. Like, uh, you know, you might have people that's calling the phone and, you know, who knows, you know, it's it's outside things that could interrupt this process. And, and, you know, nobody's going to understand that, but you, you know what I mean? And, um, but at the end of the day, if you position yourself to get the peace and the, you know, the seclusion you need. Especially as a to, writer, you need to, you want to focus. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to focus and, and put what you got into, mm-hmm. into this material so it come out to the best it could be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then I, you I, learn. I, you know, you I, learn. I, I, mean, I, I read a lot of stuff about different author, uh, authors and the things they do to get away from the outside world mm-hmm. so they can focus. You know? Right. Some go on, on trips for trips, most of the time. Cabins. They, 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 this right here completely turned off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They go, uh, you know, go back to the, to, to the days where there's no, no type right. of uh, cell phones or, or any type of technology at all. Mm-hmm. So they won't get distracted or get, uh, uh, right. you know, um, you know uh, It's your personal ways to do it. Right. You know what I mean? It, and whatever fits you, you know what I'm saying? So what do you do, like, with that focus? Me, I just, oh, my God. Um, I just tolerate <laughs> everything. <laughs> I tolerate, man, and, and still get it done, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's hard, but I've learned. You don't go down the cream, lock yourself in the basement. Don't disturb oh me. God. Got the dogs at the doors. So be- <laughs> Let me tell you something. My next, um, my next project will be, um, I probably will do something that maybe – more authors do. I probably take a trip, and maybe a couple months or whatever. Whatever it takes. I'm not going through what I went through last time. Right. You know? yeah, basically. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going through that again. So, so uh, we're gonna just recap a couple of things, man, because there's people out there that don't, don't, that don't still, don't, still don't know you, even though mm-hmm. you got one of the best selling books in the city, the mm-hmm. best selling book in the city, right. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. Um, you come from the streets of, of Trenton, New Jersey. Well, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's why it's like, you no, know we'll do it at the Briggs Library. You know what I mean? It's hood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm still downtown. <laughs> People, I, 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 I'm so, I was so tree shot it. Nah, nah. I said <laughs> Briggs Library. He's like, man, I don't know the name of the library. That's the yeah. on that street. <laughs> I've been on the street for years and never knew the name of this library. You know what I'm saying? So when I thought of this library, it was like probably the wrong thing to do, you know, in regards to this library. So. Like meet me at the live you know what I'm okay, saying? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is the wrong thing. Which is part of your past, because right. people you know, understand that we do come from the past. Mm-hmm. But you you made that transformation going through the trials and tribulations of life. Period. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because uh-huh. you, know, you mentioned before you did fair time and all that right. other stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you turned yourself into a creative author. You always had it in you. Mm-hmm. You had to find the time to bring it out. Right. You had to find the time, and you have to be aware of 
what you have, the blessings that God gives you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's so many of them. But it's up to you to pay attention. You know what I mean? Now that, uh, you know, before I started writing, writing, and actually thinking about making it as a career, um, I didn't begin without accepting God. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I couldn't do it without him. So therefore, I don't know, since then, I just been seeing a lot more blessings, you know what I'm saying? Because right. they all around, you just got to, you know, you got to be, you got you to gotta see them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. see what they are and see where they at. And, uh, you know, you just got to pay attention at the end of the day. That's the bottom line. And uh, I've started this, you know, and I saw something. I said, yeah, this is a blessing, man. This is this ain't regular. Nah, it's not. Uh, you know what I mean? Everybody can't regular. do, do yeah, this. Yeah, nah. You know I mean? Everybody can't do this. People say it all the time. Not only just the, the, uh, the just to write the book, but have the patience and the, the, mm -hmm. you know, the intelligence alone to put right. something together. The imagination. You right. know what I'm saying? The, the vivid imagination. You know, it, 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 some people are like, well, I could, I, you know, I could relate to the stories. Mm -hmm. It's still a, a, a fictional story. Some of right. you thought of, you know mm -hmm. I mean, um, which is, like I said, it's, 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 and it's all about, about how you feel about yourself. Like I, I consider myself somebody who uh, can see talent. You know what right. I mean? Like, I, like, like, like for instance, if they premiere a, a brand new song, like I could see it being a hit before it actually becomes a hit. You know that type of thing. So when I read this material, that's what I told myself. So it wasn't, you know, primarily based on. Uh, oh yeah, I'm just trying to get some money or whatever. I just read this material and felt like the rest of the world should read this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not because it's for me, because it's a good story, because it's good. You know what I mean? It takes me into a place where, you know, it's like you said, you know, you, you feel the same. I just, I'll be there. I, you know, I, I wrote these books while I was incarcerated, unfortunately. But guess what? By doing this, and the way I write and being so descriptive, I wasn't injured. Right. Exactly. I wasn't there. The whole time. I yeah, was you, in here. In you know book. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's benefit. It's, it, you know, this book became beneficial in so many ways, man. You know, and people don't realize that a book never goes out of style. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something happened to me. My kids get these books. They get royalties so every exactly. month. They get paid for the rest of their life while I'm gone. You know what I mean? So that's my... That, that has a lot to do with it, you know what I'm saying? Because if you ask me, a lot of people wonder why we're here. I think we're here to pass the torch. Yeah, exactly. Do what you do, do your job, do it right, and pass the torch. Exactly. That way. And speaking of that, that's why I actually, you know, that's why the reason why I'm here with the kids now, because mm -hmm. I love what I do for the media, the, the podcasts and everything. Right. And then when I met um, Ms. Hope and Ms. Howard, like, yo, it was it was just crazy. At first, I was looking for a spot to do my podcasts, mm. and then um, when my man M was telling me about what's going on with the kids, I was like, "Yo, I got a yo." It hit me like, "Yo, I got an idea." You know what I'm right. saying? And, and not for me, it's for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of, right quick, if they wanna, if anyone wanna come up and ask you any questions, they're more than welcome. Cause we got a couple of kids in the audience. We got some saying? kids, you know, they a little shy right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> but uh, I want. Okay. I want you don't have you, it. You have some questions? Yeah, because I'm, I'm more, you know, this is what I do. So <laughs> I don't have to be on camera to ask a question, but um, the biggest thing, you know, we go back a long ways. Mm -hmm. and everybody, this is this is Mala here with um, Kevin Giovanetti and Justice. Um, we we go back a long way. We mm -hmm. live next door to each other. <laughs> um, I, I, I think just a couple of days ago, I talked about your grandmother's cookies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have never <laughs> met anybody who made those as beautiful as your grandmother. Yeah. So there's things that, you know, I, I look at what you do and there's more to it for me mm -hmm. because we have been so close and we've done so many things together. I remember when we actually Trenton <laughs> Choir, you remember that? The Trenton um, Choir? When we joined the Trenton Choir together. I, we were singing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking so on the crates on these. Yes. Yeah. So, oh my so, God. Yes, I'm going to hear about this one. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, there aren't many. I saw your brother come on. Mm. He was watching. And, um, you know, I'm just also proud. But this thing called writing uh, takes a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, you know. I'm doing so many different things. I'm I done jumped all over the place. So, what made you disciplined? You said that you were writing when you were incarcerated. Mm -hmm. You're not incarcerated now. 
Right. So what has prompted the discipline to remain even after you come back? Because this is a challenge for every man and every incarcerated woman mm. who comes out and tries to come back into this life and try to live this life, but you're you're messed up because you've been locked up for a while and mm. things have changed. It takes that fresh air, like, oh. Yes, it's <laughs> difficult. So right. what kept the discipline for you? Uh, I got to give it to the vision. I, you know, the vision for me, like, you know, you can make a plan, right? I've been making plans all my life, you know, especially as, you know, being incarcerated. You know, you want to do something positive. You don't want to be in this position no more. You know what I'm saying? So you look for ways, you know, to, you know, make it better and, and, and you know, get you in a p place other than jail. So that's what I did initially. But then, you know, as you see what you have done and it's not a plan to me, it's a vision. So to me, a vision is something I could see, right? Vision is something that I don't have to tell you about it. I'm going to act on it because this is my vision. No one else's, no one's going to get in the way of it. I don't care who it is. It's going to get done. This is a vision that God gave me and um, to, allow anything to uh interrupt or uh you know disturb or you know what i mean this i just don't all i see is going forward with this project that's it so um as far as i'm concerned uh, i could write this book with somebody shooting in another room and you know what i mean is it, is that that's what visions do. Like that's what visions do. You focus that, that and I'm, vision I'm focused. Like yes. you could, you could sit. Like I read a lot of comments. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I, you know, that's support. But at the end of the day, you don't have to tell me nothing, right. Right? Right. right? I'm talking about. I wouldn't care who told me something. I already know. I already know where this, where I'm going with this. You know what I'm saying? I, I see the path because that's what visions are all about. You can see. You know what I mean? I know where I'm going. And uh, that's it. I mean, that's where the discipline comes in at, is just staying on the path that you see. You can see it in what you do. Because um, I, I've never had a Facebook until about eight months ago. Once <laughs> mm -hmm. I retired from teaching, right. then I felt like this was cool to go ahead and get a Facebook. In fact, I started with Twitter. Yeah, and then from Twitter, you know, um, I got into um, <coughs> television and to radio, uh -huh. and um, everybody was saying, You need a Facebook, you need a Facebook now. So, right. And I wanted to go ahead and do a Facebook, and immediately everything jumped off. But what I noticed is that without fail, you got a new something that pops up on Facebook like every other day, mm -hmm. and it's creative and it's, it's you know, it's quick, right? It's catchy. You know, and it works. Right. So everybody, indeed, does not have that. You know, no, there's no. a good thing that God puts in us that allows us mm -hmm. to do those things. Right. Um, and that's what makes it so wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, because you pull people in immediately. Right. And it doesn't matter. And I just thought, you know what? Let me see what he's doing today. Mm -hmm. And it's good. It's good stuff. So um, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm beyond impressed. Mm -hmm. You know, you, this is 23 years teaching. You know, starting radio and television at Rowan uh, University, mm -hmm. uh, and and coming back now, you know, and doing the first love is is really the greatest thing for me. But it's even better to see people like you, like Justice, sitting here, giving <laughs> mm -hmm. the real, right? You know, no no straight, no chaser, mm -hmm. so, and that's what you want, you know. And I think that's what we're living here in Trenton in, in this society. People want real. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an awesome thing. That's what it's all about. It's real. You don't want. To, I mean, you know what movies do. You know what books do. You try to take people to like I do, but I'm not going to take you outside of what's real. You right. know what I mean? I'm not going to put your mind in a position that you really can't see right. or fathom. Like, all right, this is right. a little. You know, I'm. It's, <laughs> I don't got time to exaggerate. I can just give it to you real, and you will appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, that's the whole thing with business. That's what business is all about, especially for new business um, owners or, or, or CEOs, entrepreneurs. You know, 
I'm thinking they do, but I know uh, from my understanding, they try to set themselves outside of what's already going on, right? So when I do the skits, when I do the videos, if I'm making a rap song about my book, you know what I mean? Because you know everything is going towards the book. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm just trying to do everything that other authors ain't doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm putting out skits for movies. Uh, I'm doing voiceovers. You know what I mean? Everything. I'm doing everything to get your attention about this material. Speaking of skits and movies, I actually did this before. Mm -hmm. Last time. You had a uh, series? Yeah. YouTube TV series? I'm giving, I'm, listen, I'm, you know, I'm a, uh, when I go on the road, right, this time, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to go 100% because I'm going to be honest with you. I got a problem, right? Uh, <laughs> you all I got a problem. I got a problem. I got a problem with approaching people. Okay. Um, I got a problem with talking to people that, that I don't know. That's not the life that I live for a lot of, you know what I'm saying? I've always been to myself. Um, I don't ask questions. I don't care about what other people do, you know what I mean? So it, it's going to take me some time to uh, step out of that, that, that you know, that whatever, that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shield or whatever is holding me back from doing that. But it, it's, it's happening where um, I just, you know, what I'm basically saying is I'm going to take it to a different level as far as networking this time I go on the road. So... With that being said, um, I'm gonna give them a certain amount of time to jump on board. And uh, if they're not jumping on board the way I want them to jump on board, I just do it myself. Right. You know, I don't listen. At the end of the day, no one needs no one. You know, we could say it's all about who you know, and it is. You know, most of the time it is. You know, if you meet people, it may speed up the process. Right. But at the end of the day, if you go hard enough, you can do anything you know, by yourself. Exactly. And so doing that, by you doing that, it actually draws people to you. Right. Like they see what you're doing. Right. They come knocking on the door. Yeah, they come to gravitate mm -hmm. to you. You know what I mean? So they, they come, come chasing you after a while. Right. You know what I mean? So like, it's all about that work you put. Yeah. Right. It's not like I haven't had meetings with people before. You know, millionaires, there's people in the film industry. And uh, I just don't like what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, if one person, you know, puts me on this conference call over the phone. Like, this ain't what I want to do. I want to be in the presence of who we, I'm talking to money too. This is my life right here. Exactly. So exactly. we're not doing it's conference amazing. calls yeah. when you a hundred miles away or you know what I mean this person's a thousand miles away. No, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk about this because this means everything to me. It means a lot to my future. And you know, I came a long way, man. It took me a long time to convert and think about, you know, you know a uh, life period. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> especially That's dedicating myself to something like this to, to actually dedicate myself to something other than being in the street or you know doing something that could potentially get me back in, into a prison i mean this is everything for me so of course i'm gonna go hard of course you're gonna see me on facebook of course i'm throwing a big party tomorrow night of course i'm doing everything i have to do because this is my life you live once and uh i'm rolling with it man i got to do it so we got we got uh who we got coming back to this <laughs> um you got Jasmine. She's back in. The, she's back on the scene. Um, I guess everybody's pretty much assuming uh, Honey's back. Right. You know, everybody loves Honey. Um, yeah, Honey's back. He's. He's. I ain't gonna tell you what type of condition right, right, right. he's in, but <laughs> he's breathing. When you pick up, when you know, when you get to the book, he'll be breathing. But uh, yeah, but yeah, um, I appreciate the love. I mean, it's good material. It's fans all over. I, I, that shocks me. That, that really be shocking. <laughs> but the people coming up to you and approaching you and stuff? No, like, like you know, if I'm out of town, like Virginia or something like that, North Carolina, and just people just be like, like one time I was in, uh, where I was at? In Orlando, matter of fact. Okay. And this guy had like this, what was it, like a, uh, you know them, it's not like a motorcycle, but it's like a car and a motorcycle. Oh, you know, little bikes. The guy about the uh, yeah, the, the tricycle or yeah. something they call. You sit down in it like a bike, but the, right? Yeah. And they got the three wheels. Yeah. But this dude had like a double one. I never seen one before. Oh, okay. So I got a picture of him too. So I goes up to him, you know, because sometimes I might front in that situation, <laughs> just give him the book and take a picture. You know what I'm saying? Like he really copped it. So I stepped to him with it, and he had the book. You already had the book. Yeah, I was. Cause you sell them online as well, right? Amazon, all like. 
Oh yeah. So I mean, I'm not I'm not doubting the fact that he couldn't get it. I'm just saying he had it <laughs> in that situation. You know what I mean? Because I was just going front for the, for the people. <laughs> like you know, they yeah, they got my you know what I mean? I said in Orlando, and somebody driving this got it. You know what I mean? This because that's what it's all about a perception at the end of the day. Of but course, this perception. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you don't have to paint a perception. You create it, build it, and it's there. They, they, they come, yeah. You they, know what I'm they, saying? They, they so yeah, that 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 that. that the surprise that, that yeah. kind of yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> As you freaked out for yeah, me, yeah. Like, I hand in the book. I was like, "You mind taking a picture with this book?" He was like, "Let me see it." I looked at. It, he said, "Hold on." We're in some little compartment. He had I said this book. I said, "Oh." <laughs> What? I flipped out when I said that. So when you found out when you told to use the author, what did he say? Oh, uh, yeah, that flipped him out. <laughs> yeah, that flipped him out. We was both flipped. <laughs> um, we was both flipping out, man. He was like, you wrote that? I said, yeah. yeah. Must see my ID. <laughs> but so, uh, so we traveled up down the East Coast moving moving this book right here. I mean, how far are you been? You've been to the West, anywhere the Midwest, anywhere? How yeah, far have you been? Um, First of all, let me tell you, I'm a self-publisher. Uh, um, you know, the tour know. thing is not cheap. Um, <laughs> it's not easy. Um, hotels, flights, it's, you know, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't gotten to the places that I wanted to. But up and down uh, the east and the south, yeah, I've been everywhere. Okay. You know what I mean? From Durham, all that, you know, Virginia, uh, everywhere. Along the 95 course, right? The 95 course, and you know, jump on over the um, <laughs> what is it, 87? 87, yeah. yeah, you know, what I mean, along those lines, and then all the way down to Miami, yeah. And okay. I spent some time in Florida, so and yeah, I, I, I'm I'm gonna do the I'm, I'm I'm breaking it down this time, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you would think this, that, and the third, but I'm by myself, you know, you know I'm talking about. I'm by you're not, you're not back by no stuff. major company or no big publishing company. Nah, company. I don't have no sponsors. You got a, you got a manager, you manager or anything like that? You working with people? I don't have a manager. I don't have a publisher. I don't have anything. Everything you see Old school, is what the trunk, like I do. Back in the day. Yeah. You know, so I do the best I can except for the networking part. <laughs> I have to get better at that. I have to approach and be like, listen, Right. You know, because the time when I was in Miami, I, I know what type of effect I can have on people, but that doesn't change, you know, the way I move. I got to shake it. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And I, I shook it in Miami at the, uh, you know, the black, um, what's the AB, what's that, the, um, the American black, uh, hmm? It's the American Black Film Festival, right? Okay. Oh, uh, the American Black Film Festival. I went there and like the big party was at Lowe's, and uh, I go to Lowe's, and it was crazy how I got in there because they wouldn't let nobody in there because all the celebrities and the movie stars was in there, producers and stuff. So what happened was, when I first got to Miami, I went to um, the desk yeah. and I said, "Listen, can I see y'all pool because my, I'm gonna fly my daughter in and she loves swimming pool." So they gave me the card for the pool, and I left with the card. <laughs> and when I came back the next day, when all the movie stars was in there, I had the card, and they let me in. So I goes in there, I see my man first. I always with Puff Daddy, he always with uh, Diddy all the time. I said, damn, they got a face right there. Go to him, start talking to him, make a long story short. I got Lee Daniels. I got... Uh, Another producer that did um, pre uh, what's the other um, Twelve Years as a Slave, mm -hmm. and um, all these they start crowding around me, listening to my story, and they was real impressed about what I have done in the period of time that I have done it, and uh, they was just listening. And they all got a book, and I talked to one now, and um, yeah, it's just, it's you never know what you can you know yeah, put no. yourself in yeah, that's, that's that if you do it. Yeah, you gotta do it. Do it. Got to do it, right? Because if not, then you'll be sitting on the shelf. You know what I mean? You wonder why? Right. Still out the trunk, talking about uh, about, about buying your book and shit. You know what I mean? Whatnot. Right. So I, I want to address something. I have to because I, I promised the owner. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my event is tomorrow. A lot of people's a little shaky because of the drama that took on. place. You know, over the city, and um, you know, they was gonna cancel me, man. You know, they already made their mind up. You know, they came up with a story. 
said the police did it and uh, you know it's a few family members that's you know on the police force you know I, I called them and you know make a long story short we handled the situation you know the police mm -hmm. provided me i had first of all i had to pay for police right i see that in your post right i had I to pay for them post. but they added more you know what i'm saying it was generous enough to give me more just to you know paint the picture that safety is in the area you know what i mean and you know maybe hopefully deter anybody else who is coming with that type of attitude or behavior but um yeah but you know they canceled me and um they didn't care they didn't care about the losses that i would take you know and the tickets that were sold already and what i had to go through behind right, this right, right. but uh make a long story short it happened and i ensured him that um the people that comes in will be 30 and up mm -hmm. you know what i mean and um we come to have a good time as it possible so you know have a good time to celebrate mm -hmm. new release i'm saying the workhouse chronicles part two <laughs> i mean so these are available for sale starting tomorrow right tomorrow all right well, let me, let's get, i'm gonna cut you off. let's get back to what we were just talking about as far as the things going on in the city mm -hmm. i mean this past weekend we did have some some some, some, some a lot of violence i ain't gonna say some a lot of violence right and i mean um 10 people got shot on early saturday morning right and then the Monday of on your, your neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, uh, another five, six people got shot. One got murdered. Right. I mean, um, shout out to Boogie. The young man that got you know, the rest yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah easy. good dude. Good his, his know, family. His family. Um, how you feeling about the things that's going on in the city, man? I know we came up, I'm saying, in the 90s, 80s, you know what I'm saying? We, mm -hmm. we, we lived, so we had fun, we did, we did, but it wasn't this tense. You know what I mean? People right. wasn't just losing their lives over petty stuff. Right. You know I mean, what what you think that's what's going on? Like, what can be done to change? Have changed some of the stuff that's going on. It's 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 hard, man. Cause you know these kids these days they seeing too much at an early age, right? So you know, with with little bit of time, but with so much experience and and witnessing the things that these kids are seeing. It's it's hard to tell them something different, right? You know what I mean. It's hard to tell them something different because you know, of course, I could be like, ah, oh, they don't, they just don't care. You feel me? Like some, some don't, some, some I mean, they don't. don't, some don't, but they don't, and that's the only way it's gonna stop is if you make, if you, uh, you know, help them care. Address the situation. So how can you help these kids to care? That's the whole thing. Now you could say, okay, prison could do that, but there's no but reform in can prison. It? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You no, know, we, we, you know, you've been locked up. You did, did you take federal, county, state, business, whatever. Right. I mean, I've been incarcerated a couple of times, and mm -hmm. jail doesn't change nobody. I would say they no, never change anybody. Majority of the time, jail is not going to change a man into something better. No. Nah. A lot of times, you go, you go to jail, you get, you find more connections to more, <laughs> more criminal mm -hmm. stuff. Do you do, 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 you know, what I'm saying, the positive right. stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, you come home like, oh, I got my man number. He out of town. We can move these things out there. He said we good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's the first thing people think about. Um, See, the thing is, they they act like you know the behavior is behavior. Like I got nothing to lose, right? Because right. so, if I could go to an event and shoot up ten people, that's what my behavior reflects. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I have nothing to lose. And a lot of times they do have something to lose. A lot of these kids got kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So until they actually know. The importance of being there for the actually, kids. The young man that got shot on Bellevue, I heard that he was actually holding his daughter in his arms when he got murdered. Mm. That's, that's, that's no crazy. Of Buzzard Avenue, so I didn't hear that. That's that's yeah, crazy. That's what I heard. And, and but it, it, it has to be something that they have to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like me, you know, I, I got sons, but it's like when I had my daughter, you know, that was it for me. It's just something about this daddy daughter thing, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's a little different. Um, that's what hit home for me, you know. I just it's something you're supposed to be there for all your kids, but right, it's something right, about right. the daughter thing. <laughs> it's just that you can't imagine not being there that's if cool. something happens to girl. her. Yeah, you got a little girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could you live with that? You know what I mean? But like, you know, boys, you could be like, ah, right, well, my son will get him back. You know what I mean? <laughs> or something like that. But a little girl, if you're not there for a little girl, I don't know about nobody else, but for me, that's something I can't even imagine. Imagine, man. Not seeing her go up. So, or anything like that. And then, you know then the whole, the whole 
thing about the kids in general, like if you're not there for these kids. That's another thing we were talking about how, you know, back in the day, you know, you had you had the whole block watch the kids' neighborhood watch. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just one, I mean, you had to worry about, you know, going to the store. Cause, mm-hmm. cause you know, Miss Lou down the street, you just said, wrong, she's gonna tell your mom or you right. know what I mean? It was it was different. You know what I'm saying the whole community looked out for each other. So, you know, getting back to a community atmosphere or community way of living could be also help you be part of the answer as well. Right. You know I mean, you know, a lot of people say the town, the town is this, the town is that. You know, it's the people. You can change it. Yeah. You can change it. You talking about it on Facebook and, and running your mouth on the porch ain't doing exactly. nothing. Exactly. exactly. Let's just make let's just be clear. Exactly. First of all, talking is doing nothing. Not nowadays. You know, listen, you that pen, action. that pen, that computer is everything you need. It's all your resources. It's everything. If you don't know how to write a letter, the, the, you can write a letter from YouTube. Yeah, you They'll know, show you, you how to write, write a letter. letter. Yeah. They'll show you the steps to take to change laws and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, to make a change. You right, know what I mean? Right. That's what it's all about. Screaming about it on social media for likes and all that, that's not doing nothing. You can start with your own child, first of all. First and foremost. You know what I mean? And I put this on Facebook the other day. I said, listen, calculate how much time you actually spend with your child. I've seen that. Yeah. You feel me? Compared to your business or you're all working right. and you're, you're doing right. what you're doing. You know bills got to time? be paid. Nobody's blaming parents. Oh, no, no, you got to work. Just be aware. Be mindful of the situation. If you if you doing 10 hour job, if you're doing 10 hour jobs and 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 not only that, you getting off and you running here and your child is, you know, waking up just as early as you, mm-hmm. getting on a bus, going to school, going guys nowhere else after school, mm-hmm. waiting for you to get home. And by the time you get there, you want him to do his homework and go to bed. What is you really <laughs> what are you giving this child? Nothing. Exactly. Okay. So, but but well, guess what? Well, who's giving it? Anyway. Guess who's giving it to him? The streets. The streets is giving it to him. The streets is giving him everything. They're giving him the motivation to do wrong. Mm-hmm. They're giving him the, the, the motivation to do right. Whatever. But it ain't the parents. The parents can talk like this all day. We all know what our love is for the children. We know it's genuine and it's unconditional. Right. But at the right. end of the day, it means nothing if he only getting it for a couple hours out of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's not he's not getting used to that. He doesn't recognize that it's genuine. He doesn't recognize it's unconditional. He doesn't care and that you're going to look for it somewhere else. Right. They look at here a little bit and here I think, you know, I'm coming at, you know, from an old school vibe, real deep. Um, and I think that's where the parents used to do. The things mm. our parents used to do. We were just talking about it in the idea that we had to be on the porch or in the house right. before that light came on mm-hmm. in the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, too many parents don't even know where their kids are. Mm-hmm. Um, no, we're not faulting parents, but there are responsibilities at home. That starts at home first. Yeah, and it has to start at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I said, I taught for twenty three years. I'm, you know, I never got tired in a sense of teaching somebody else's kids. I would go home and pray, God, please put somebody in a path for my children because my investment to other people's kids was one fifty, one seventy five percent. Mm. You know, so when I came in, yeah, I was exhausted because I've given everything of me. But are my kids covered? Right. You know, because that's the key. You know, nothing uh-huh. is more valuable or more important <clears throat> than my own children. And right. I think, you know, parents have lost that trying to assimilate, trying to, you know, keep up with the Joneses, trying to get wherever they feel like they want right. to be. Sometimes we have to take the sacrifices. Right. Because our child is most important, right. uh, and uh, it's it's a reality base. Mm-hmm. You know, I go back. I was just telling somebody when my oldest daughter had her son. Yeah, you were talking about that conversation yesterday. We uh, talking about it yesterday. Were we just Tuesday? And Tuesday, I said, yeah. um, it, it's it's real. But when I found out she was pregnant, we had to sit down and have conversation, real talk. That said, now when this child is born, for at least the next eighteen years, you mean nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Your life is child. done. Right. Because what is most valuable and important is the raising of this child. Mm-hmm. Everything takes a backseat. Everything. Everything. You know, and right. I think I'm seeing a lot of parents who have lost the concept. The concept of right. being a parent. That's right. You know, and, and you know what? a lot of these parents ain't parents. They, they're <laughs> children. They're not adults. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, 
I mean, we, we talked about this like say, on Tuesday. It's, it's, it's a different cycles, a different reasons, different yeah. scenarios, and we gotta come together. Like I said, you know, stop talking and start making changes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, from the from the household to the neighborhood. I mean, we gotta mm-hmm. make changes. Right. You know, we gotta we gotta right. teach these kids to, to start having respect for not just for themselves, but but for other people as well. You know what I mean? Like some of these, like you said, these kids, they got nothing to lose. They like they got nothing to lose. No, but I mean, so they, they got them, they just, my own life. Yeah, exactly. I'm not right. Got your life. You know, that's his life. That's right. It won't matter. You mm-hmm. know. So and it's tough. It's, it's it's the perception, and, and you know the kids, they watching. They watch. They yeah. watch. Yes. They looking. They see yes. how you act. They see you leaving them with anybody. Mm-hmm. Where am I going? They don't even know who babysitting them tonight. Cause you want to go out to the bar. <laughs> right. exactly. They see this. Yeah. You don't care about this child if you let anybody babysit this child. You know what, mm-hmm. Kev? The, the deepest conversation I had to have was in Willowboro High School. I can tell you straight up, teaching ninth grade. And one of the young girls, just as smart as a whip, mm. came in one day. I knew something was wrong. She wasn't talking. Normally, she had much conversation for you. She wasn't saying a word. And I said, well, sweetheart, when you're ready to talk, I'll be ready to listen. Right. And that's it. And I, I got a good 20 minutes passed. And out of the blue, she said, why did my mom have to go out to the club on my birthday? And I stopped. And I said, sweetheart, oh my God. Okay, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm going to say sorry for your mom. Right. You know, I can't give you a reason why. You know, and I can tell you for real, that's messed up. That's truly messed up. Yes, it is. But everything in her was crying out in real pain that said, I, need some help. I wasn't even valuable right. on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know exactly. What I mean? So, you know, our parents are missing the mark, right. unfortunately. And I love, you know, what Tanetta is doing here at Howard Summer Choices. I got to give a plug. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. I'm going to give it too, but you, know, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, somebody just said something about it on Facebook, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, a blessed child. Shout uh-huh. out to blessed child. He's a sponsor of the Blog Talk Radio, yes. uh, stress, uh, stress that Radio. Yes. Shout out to him. He said, um, you know, we need, uh, uh, you know, uh, after school programs and centers. First thing I said is like, well, is, is a after school program here, here. at the yes. Bridge Library, HAC program, yes. Howard's Healthy Choices. You know what I'm yes. saying? We here, Miss Howard is here, Miss Hope is here, yes. Monday through Friday, every yes. day. And, and on so. some weekends, yeah, and then, and then <laughs> on, on weekends at times too. Yes. So, you know, yes. if people looking for something, we do have it in the city. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you just got to get out and find it. I mean, yeah. it's like this this, this book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like changing, you know, living a better life. You got to get out there and, and make it happen. Right. You know, sitting at home, complaining on Facebook or right. talking to your, your friends about it on the phone is not going to make it happen. Yeah. It only I mean, takes one step. That's it. One step. That's it. A phone call that can light mm-hmm. that flame you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you turn the stove on. Mm-hmm. Once it light, it's lit. It's lit. It's lit. You know what I'm saying, and that's all you gotta and do. Everybody is go take through that one little the ones step. That, that actually see the light, or go mm-hmm. through some type of experience, or, right. or some type of trial and tribulation to see that light. Once they do see the light, they is off the races. Right. Like everybody like said, you say when you was incarcerated, you saw the light. Right. You know, like um, when I got sick from um, drinking and party too much, I seen the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, cause I seen my life passing before my eyes. Mm-hmm. I woke up at the, at the hospital over ten years ago, like yo, something got to get, something got to change. Mm-hmm. You know, and hopefully. <laughs> We don't take that for everybody to go through situations like we went through. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Either being incarcerated or almost losing their life to make a change. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. I mean, know? the thing is, you, you, these you, kids. Listen to the stories, like, you know what I'm saying? Listen to your story and other stories, and, and, and you know what I mean? And, you know what I'm saying? And run with it. So, you know. These kids are killers, man. They are, man. Yeah, I hate to say it, but they killers. And in order for that to turn around, it's going to take a lot of work, man. And, and, and so to answer that question, what could be done? Um, let's just start over, man. Let's just start from scratch. Like, let's just start raising these kids better. Stop putting them in Gucci little baby shoes mm-hmm. and, and stop dressing them up to, right. to, to be a potential drug dealer when they get 18. Right. Because you ain't gonna be buying that Gucci for the rest of your life. Right. You right. might can't afford it tomorrow. Oh, man, bless y'all said the best. Is, uh, we all say, uh, stop, stop being a parent and stop being a friend. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, we talked about that. Exactly. We hit so many topics when we were talking justice that it became, you know, we need to take it right now. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Every I, time I come in, I'm just going to start the podcast. Right? <laughs> oh, we live. You know what? I, had a, I was having a very, very good conversation with Officer Rivera Scott Dillon yesterday. And we said this, he said the same thing. He said, you know, we really should be taking this. 
Mm-hmm. Um, right. So the first is the valuable conversation that gets us all in one accord. Exactly. You know, but then it takes movement. You know, we got to do, we got to ignite, we got to get. And involved. also, we got to get them involved. We got to get the kids involved. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You see a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of times, you see the adults all doing all the talking and you know what I'm saying? And this and that. But it mm-hmm. doesn't help if you don't have the kids involved yeah. or, or talking to them. Because yeah. you don't know what's going on with these kids, man. You know what I mean? Right. You know, right. like you all teenagers, we all had different thoughts and things about life when we was growing up. Mm-hmm. Luckily, it wasn't that serious for us back then. Mm-hmm. We had, or either that, we had somebody to turn to to talk to. True. Now that these kids feel isolated, like, like they had nobody to talk to. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't trust nobody. You know what I mean? I want to go holler at my homie because he know me best. You about to go roll up, pop these pills, take yeah. this lean, or whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? And whatever happens after that happens. Right. You know what I mean? So we got to reach out to these kids and sit down with them and talk to them. Yeah. You know I mean? <clears throat> do you know when you do something positive that you, in my opinion, you then become a role model, right? Yes. Because somebody's watching. You know what I mean? And, you know, when I set up my little tents and I go out west on Stavis and the Boulevard, come on, wall, and all that, I'm doing my job in so many ways. You know what I'm saying? I'm covering the orders as far as I'm concerned. Right. I got these kids saying that you could do something different. You know what I mean? I got the dudes that's already involved in whatever they involved in on the street seeing what could be done differently. You know what I mean? Before, you so, said you said Right. You just come up to you well, like, you know, I could go on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. You said it was a stop on Walnut, though. Right. With the books. Well, like, I, I go into the other stuff. You got to sell your book. <laughs> right. I go into the hoods. And, like, I went in Miami one time in the projects. And, and you know, it, they, it was deep out there. <laughs> you know, and I told I said to so, let's I'm set up here today. You know what I mean? And I told them why. And, um. Uh, it was all for it, you know what I mean? I told them what this could do, right. you know, what um, what this could do, you know what I'm saying? And they agreed and do your thing. You know, and you know what? It's crazy how you say you can't network, which is wrong, because you network in a different way, because you reach, you talk to people right. that you, you notice that. You say you can, you can go to the I'd projects. I'd talk to killers. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> the entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. It goes straight to the projects. Yeah. And look, man. I feel more comfortable <laughs> talking to a killer. <laughs> which is a good thing, though. Yeah, I mean, thing, though. maybe. Those, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, those, those uh, things, think the message is a good thing. <laughs> right. Exactly, because and, um, these are the ones that's actually out there. Right. You know, we're not gonna knock the hustle. That's right. Whatever it takes. And mm-hmm. so um if that's what it is, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. How else are they gonna be reached? How else are we gonna eat at least reverse the right. curse? Exactly. You can't reverse the curse to sit back Sit in the boardroom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That it will change. We gotta move this. We gotta move it. Yeah. It's yeah, gonna take it. bodies, real bodies moving. I'm not talking about bodies dropping, I'm talking about real bodies moving forward mm-hmm. and doing. Um I be the ex- I am the example. <coughs> Let me not use foul language. I am the example, not right. be the example. Um, and as long as I remain the example, somebody's following because you what you said, somebody's watching. Somebody always somebody watching. Somebody's watching. Somebody always so watching. So it does take willing parties. It, 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 it was your own child or the child next the next door neighbor's child. Yes. I mean somebody's always watching. Right. And I mean right. and I always, you know, when I when I when I move and make, do certain things, I always make sure I pay attention to what I do and what I say around certain people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it can affect them in some any type of way. Mm-hmm. And um it's crazy how we went back to this conversation we had on Tuesday because I was in front of my house. You know what I'm saying? Little young boys were um, walking, little kid walking up down the street. He had to be no more like nine, eight, nine years old. So it was trash in front of my house. Mm. So I'm picking the trash up, throwing it, you know what I mean? Put it in the garbage. Right. So he walked up to me like, why are you doing that? I said, because, you know, it's trash. I'm throwing it away. You know what right. I mean? He said, is that what you do for a living? I said, listen. My friend said, look how I'm dressed, man. I got crack, I got khakis on my button up. Mm. You no, know, sir. This is not, this is not what I do for a living. I mean, it's respect for my, my neighborhood. Right. I mean, I don't want my neighborhood looking all trashy. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And like I told uh uh Miss Hope, first thing that came to my mind is like, who was your parents, bro? <laughs> I ain't say it to my loud, but just a right. thought, like, who was your parents? Right. You know what I mean? Yes. But I explained to him, like, I just, this is what I, you know what I'm saying? I don't want my neighborhood looking trashy. So I'm gonna pick up the trash and put it in the, in the garbage. You know, one one I want to I want to play something before we go. I, uh, I was doing a you documentary, right? Huh? You got Bluetooth? You say you want to play something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to play something. I was doing a documentary, and you know, I was in the hood uh, just talking to everybody and asked them what they felt about uh, my my you know my transition and, and things that was going on and how they felt about it. Um. Hold on. Oh. Okay. So 
I was shocked that what this little boy said. I mean, I know him, but I had no idea he was watching that closely. And uh, and it's you know, I'm, I'm I just want to play it if you can hear you it. Connect it to the Bluetooth and can it's, it's, it's flashing. You just uh, okay. It's the Bluetooth and shit connect. It's the um, it's some some stick or something like that. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Yep. Okay. First thing. There you go. All right. So here he is. And he's smart. Like, I was just like, <gasps> <laughs> he was smart. Guys, you feel me? I'm a kid from around the way. Um, but I, I, I see Kevin Kev out here. You feel me? He be selling his books. I heard on um, Workout Chronicles. It was really good. And it influenced me to start thinking positively and doing more positive things in terms of writing and, you know what I'm saying, like music wise. Because, like, I, I'm I'm like really into music and stuff, and it, it, it influenced me to actually like start taking it seriously to know that you can gain a name. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. I was just like holding the camera, like, mm. <laughs> so you know, my thing is they watch, like these kids watch, and and you you don't you just don't know sometimes what your you know what you're doing how that has an impact on, on who you know as young as he is yeah. and, and the way he speaks like i you know what i mean i was shocked about that but it just it shows you that people yeah and it only takes as far as i'm concerned if one person could if you can influence one person to do the right thing so that's that's that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's more, it that's more than one that mm-hmm. wasn't influenced you know what I mean? right so, so one person can actually really change the world right mm-hmm. so what kind of effect do you mm-hmm. have on who you're speaking to? Right. But it behooves us to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So tell us more about this party tomorrow, man. Big promo party tomorrow. Yeah, the party is yeah, it. I mean, man, man, last year we had a Let's get to the book. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The last year the party was at uh, the Ambassador. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that was we ain't, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Right. We ain't leave the parking lot at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's what's up. Club was closed three hours ago. We still out there <laughs> lit. You know, it, it's, it was a different environment. It was a different thing. Like, it was love. You know what I mean? Of course, it's, it's going to be people that's coming to, you know, just to hear music and, and, and you know what I mean, do the party thing. Right, but, right. you know, for the most part, people, a lot, most of the people knew what it was about. It's a, They knew where I came from. They know what I'm going through. And they know what I'm getting done. You know what I mean? It, you know, talk is cheap at the end of the day. I'm doing things that some people can't do. Right. You know what I mean? You know, because it's like with your kids. We all talk about, yeah, you should be a doctor. You basically want your kids to do something you couldn't do. Right. You couldn't <laughs> go to school for eight years. You couldn't go to college Ten. for all of these. You couldn't get your doctrine. You but guess what? First four, you can, then an extra two on top of Right, that. you can influence somebody else to do it better than you could do it. Right. That's easy, but, you know, for the, yeah, it's tomorrow night. Uh, eight thirty to ten ten thirty will be the book signing, and uh, we'll have some food, and you know we'll just have some fun, man. And I'm trying to get a comedian to come in during that process, and then you know ten thirty, um, we gonna you know it's gonna turn, turn, turn up. up. <laughs> turn up. <laughs> I got an after party too. At the party after the party. I don't, I don't want. <laughs> this. He's at the party after the party. All right. I got uh, you know, excuse the kids wherever they went, but uh, <laughs> it's at the weed man joint. So I don't want this night to end. You understand? That's yes, right. I went up and in the parking lot till the sun came up. This time I'm in the building until the sun came up. <laughs> and uh, shout out to everybody involved. You know, I got hosts. Nice speaker for it too. I know it was the. Turn out nice tomorrow. Yeah, probably. it's gonna be a beautiful night, and we could keep it that way. That's right. That's so right. come on through, and uh, like I said, um, come as an adult because we need adult identification. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so don't don't talk about you drove to the club without your ID. Why are you doing driving right. around anyway without your ID? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have tight security. I got police presence. I'm gonna have police inside <laughs> drinking with you. You know what I'm saying? Because. Uh, I have cousins that's police officers, and they're going to look like us, but they're going to be having a good time along with you, man. That's what it's all about. That's what's up. You know? So this book so so a lot. I know it sold a lot. So do you feel, like, do you feel like this did what it needed to do as far as sales or reaching people? Yeah. Uh, 
I felt it did good as far as sales. You know, considering it was my first, um, I'm not going to lie on nothing. I'm not going to say this is the best seller, mm-hmm. according to the New York Times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real. I'm, I'm giving you a book, a good one. Right. You know what I mean? I don't have to the, uh, the, the advocate mm-hmm. what it did as far as finance. I, I'm, I'm past that level. Right. Um, you know, I don't value money like that. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of money before, and i also seen how fast it can go. Exactly. So, yes. you know, keep therefore... That in mind. I'm supposed to keep that in mind. Just keep fast you get it. Fast as you hey, don't. I mean, it disappear like... Like a ghost, <laughs> like you will when they put the cuffs on you. you know what I mean, so <laughs> let them know. Let them know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's reality. But I, you know, I don't value money. I know I need money to do what I need to do. But I'm not going to value it. I'm not going, you know, possess right, it. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Only some, but, but, for me personally, I'm thinking about not, not the money perspective. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Just the, I just want to throw that out there. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. But yeah, that's what it's all about for me. Uh, uh, for the most part, that's all I want. I want this to be out there. Right, right. You you know, people. I want this to be in the hands of everybody because this ain't your regular jail book, even though only half the book is in jail. This one ain't really like in jail. Like, remember the part two? Yeah, it's in there, but you know, okay. certain, certain things. chapters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part, part, part one, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, most, the few, one and a half was actually inside the jail, except for more characters was in jail. Yeah. Before they hit the And the first one, only half the book was actually taking you inside the jail. Right. And you know, after that, you know, everything was in Trenton. Right. In the city. So that's that's what all of them is basically like. I don't want to, you know, flood anybody with this. You know what I mean? I don't want nobody to be in jail. No. So I'm not going to never write a book about jail, like the whole book. Right. I don't want to place you in that type wait, of wait, environment. The thing is, they say, for that long. For those who <laughs> you know I mean? they know it's, it's not the... The, the fact that it's about it's a book about about jails is the stories of the people that was in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't about being incarcerated or you know what I mean it's the things they was going through in mm-hmm. there or on the streets. Right. You know I mean, so if you read the book, you know, like it's more to it than being in jail. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So a lot of people know that yeah. when they read it. You know what I'm saying? But they see, but you know, a lot of local people <laughs> see and with the cover and all that, a lot of people see the cover and the local people see the name, the title of the book. They of course, they can assume that, oh, this is about the jail. But really, it's not. Right. You know what I mean? It's about the ca- these characters, these characters yeah. that is actually going through situations Cause stemming the- from this facility. I, I, know, I, know, I, I know people, that didn't, some people did, probably didn't read the book, so I, I'm not going to spoil right. too much. Because what's mm-hmm. the name? She, she died. The one that was getting um, by, by, the, by the CO. Yeah, we can't talk about that. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I used to say the name. Yeah, we can't do that. Uh, That's too much. Get, get the book. Get the, get, get the book. You know what I'm saying? Disregard, folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Don't be enough for him to go pick the book up. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, like, this whole thing only been out, like, not even a last year. Last year, because last, last year the interview was... Close to around the same time, like, like right. do, uh, had to be because it was, it was before, was it before or after the uh incident at uh Auto Night? I think it was, yeah, before. It was before that, it so, was before I had it so, before that. It's about a year. Let me yeah. tell you something. I did this interview in New uh, uh not in, in New York, in Manhattan. And uh, listen, I sat down, I spoke with this girl, she was you know, she was interviewing me, mm-hmm. and the way she described this book, man. I recorded it. That shit, I mean, you know, excuse my friend, it blew my mind. Like, <laughs> she was, it was impressive, man. That's what's up. It made me want to go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. <laughs> but like, no, is this is yours. <laughs> like, the way she was breaking it down, it was just like, wow. Let's, Maybe let's, this is she was, this, 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 <laughs> The whole essay of the joy out of it. She was saying words. I don't know. I mean, she was just. I said, wow. That's, that's the, then I had this guy from Israel hit me. He was from Israel. He was like a, a professor. He, he travels and teaches. Mm. The way he broke it down, I'm just like, dang, how did you even get the book, brother? <laughs> but I be forgetting <laughs> that it's online. It's online. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so y'all can go to Amazon anytime you want. You know what I mean? But if, 
if you're in the, in the area of you know I'm in town, then you can get it from me. I'll be happy to sign it, and uh, you know, you get it from me, yeah, man. Because in fact, while we before we wrap this up, we give people your your information, contact information, where they can find you, where they can find the, the part two. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. gonna be online as well, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So let me know where everybody, everything gonna be at. Where mm -hmm. you gonna be at, especially tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow mm -hmm. is the hundred Whitaker uh infinity lounge uh they have booths in there you know it's it's, it's a nice environment I, I love it you know i mean i love the uh i love it you know you can you can call you can contact me on facebook for a ticket or a shirt or you know the book of course <laughs> and the signing starts at 8 30 again Which, come on yeah the uh it signs i mean it starts at 8 30 and that will that process will end at 10 30. Mm -hmm. and then you can put your books up and uh guess what we could get it going get it, get it lit get it lit the kids are saying, i'm gonna be lit, lit. <laughs> <laughs> i love so the you, professional you still got uh, copies of this or the files online as well huh yeah that's still online uh, i got that on uh digital i got that on uh kindle you get that audio as well you got the audio now yeah so you did you do the audio the uh yeah uh, who wasn't that's I mean, I, you know, you know me. I, you know I mean, my skits. Like, you know, I'm a character anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, take that off. Yeah. So, um, yes. I mean, you can get it on Amazon, Kindle. I, it's a lot of work with that studio, boy. Yeah, I got that. You, you need plenty of fluids, and <laughs> you need, Tell you know. This is just a whole book. So it took you, I know it took you like at least a good month or so to do the audio. Like how long did it actually take you to do the whole audio for the for the uh, for the book? Mm. That's that's hours. It made me want to build my own studio. That's what it did. <laughs> it made me want to build my own studio. I went to ATL and recorded it. You touched and, on an area that I have been looking into because I was thinking, you know what, I think I want to do make sure I have some of those targets on on mm -hmm. his I'm not saying people are lazy. Like some people don't have the time to really physically pick the book up and read it. Right. They're ready to just listen to it, which is cool too. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you actually, you got to pay for a subscription, or you got to pay to download it for the audio, correct? Do you have to what for the audio for the book? You got to, you got to pay for the download it or whatever. Yeah, uh, it, it ain't as expensive as uh, you know the book the hardback. Right, 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 right. right, right. But um, yeah, it, it, let me tell you something. It's a lot of money. Oh in yeah. That. You know that's where you know i never knew that until i actually did some research only, only just, and that's where a lot of the money comes from well, yeah. the audio yeah. you know because it streams and mm -hmm. you know what i mean so, so you know so you're on facebook you're on twitter instagram all of them let, let people know man yeah i'm on facebook kevin Giovanetti. uh i'm on instagram uh kevin kev 609498 I just didn't know it was a thousand Kevin Cabs out there. <laughs> so I put half my phone number on there as well. So um <laughs> so you know, um <laughs> I just found it I just found it strange that um I couldn't use my name without you know just put my half my um, well, Kevin, it's my actually phone a pretty pretty name. popular name though. I mean so Yeah, I I didn't know that, but um, <laughs> But you know, I, I got a lot going on right now. A lot of people hit my phone I'm going crazy. I'm sweating over here. But uh, uh and what, what what's the what's the message that you want to leave for people, whether whether it's about your book, whether it's about life, whatever it is, what's mm. the message that you want to leave for the people that are watching, um, that will watch this, because this will live far beyond tonight. Yes, it will. Right. Um I would like to say I came, I became a firm believer that you could do exactly what you want to do if you put the work in. You know what I'm saying? I can't sit here. It'll take a long time for me to sit here and tell you how hard I work on what I'm doing. You know what I mean? But I will say if I believe, you know, I could contest to it. If you work hard enough and you stay focused mm -hmm. and you find that vision, and continue on with it without a shadow of doubt it's gonna happen and if it doesn't guess what you tried you, you tried you did your best and can't nobody take it away from you at nobody. the end of the day exactly so um don't complain just do it 
because you never know. And that was my motto this time. When, you know, I've been to jail a few times and I always said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. This time, I said, listen, we ain't got time for to be a hypocrite. Right, right, right. If you respect yourself and, and love yourself like you say you do, what are you being a hypocrite for? So do exactly what you know you should be doing and do what it. you say you're going to do. do you know what I'm saying? Because let's be clear. And there you think clearly. Oh, yeah, because you're not no, 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 no substance. Yeah, you got nothing to do. You got no alcohol, real responsibility. No. You don't have no distractions. You're thinking at your best. Mm -hmm. So why not follow those mm -hmm. thoughts exactly. and those images and those visions, you feel me, when you're thinking at your best? So that's what I did, and I followed, and I said, you know what, this is what God gave me. Let God drive for a while. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Let God Amen. take the will, man. Let the Lord take the will and see what happens. And, you know, I got a lot of uh, cleaning up to do. It's not an easy it's a process. process. It's a process. Yeah, it's not yeah, it's easy. It's At, Especially, right. you know, you live the majority of the life that you've been so far, you know, there's so much wrong. It's time, right. it's hard to, it's hard, you know, that's a lot of stuff to clean up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got a house full of stuff. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. You just look at your, you look at the problems you got in your life and you fix them. Fix them. Clean them up. You know, because ain't nobody in your way but you. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody's in your way but you. That's the first book I picked up. Right. Shout out to my uh, big papa. That's my man, uh, Gene Bowie. He does a lot of stuff in the uh, community as well. <laughs> He sent me that book and said, get out of your own way. way. Yeah, I heard about that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out your own way. If you're hanging around the wrong people, stop. If you're messing with an abusive husband, stop. If, you go, if you're drinking and you're doing whatever, stop. No, I know there's a lot of, um, I watched the, uh, the, uh, the Drunk uh, Champs podcast, and I noticed like a lot of, a lot of celebrities, even, even hip-hop celebrities, a lot of them stopped doing like all that drinking and all that because it caused so many problems in their lives. They letting it go, mm -hmm. you know, because getting to that point now, right? And because you you know mess messed up all this money, you know what I'm saying, and you got in and out of jail, like hold on, something's wrong, right? And what, what I'm doing wrong? And they said, get out your own way, let God, you know what I'm saying, drive, right? You know what I mean? And change. And they said, clean that shit up, yeah. clean that stuff clean up, clean it up, clean it up. We did good today, man, without the cursing. Last time we was cursing up a storm. Oh, we right. <laughs> We did uh, good good. I told him we were going to do, because uh, the kids. I ain't going to do that in here. I feel like I'm in church right now, actually. Especially the whole pit. I got this guy. I took this crazy. back to the, uh. I'm sitting there. Yeah, back, because it's crazy. Cause, you know, Hope, Hope did this uh, distinguish. Uh, this, she, actually put it, she actually put it on Facebook, her age and everything. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, all right, that's cool. You know what I mean, And then she's like, yo. Me, um, you know, me, me and Kev grew up together. Like, word, like, he, okay, he only not thought he was. <laughs> nah, well, she's older than me. <laughs> I mean, I was a little boy. I mean, she bought me presents, like, you know what I mean? So, I, said, oh, I, I still remember the presents you got. You got me that art. Uh, you got me that uh, sketch pad. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And right. so um, even at 14, 15, that, right. was, that was easy stuff for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so to, to go to your mom and say, hey, Kev, you know, come come to this, mm -hmm. you know, it's a gospel choir. Right. And, um, you know, she was like, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. You know, so um, those are the things you remember. Mm -hmm. um, those are the things that build character. Right. Those are the things that keep you grounded. Right. You, know, you don't know. How to be grounded until you're you're in the air, mm -hmm. falling around like a tornado has gripped you, right? And then realize, um, I better go back to what I learned, right? And start letting that stuff marinate mm -hmm. and do some changes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, that's I always I always could say that about myself. Sometimes uh, I've been open to some bad things, but I've been open to everything. You know what right, I mean? Right. I don't see nothing wrong with doing something. Like if somebody, like for instance, if you was to come to me and say, uh, this it'll take a minute, you know, come to this church with me right quick. I want you to hear something. Even though uh, I might not, you know, let's just say, you know, which I am, I'm Muslim, right? Like this to say, even though I study Islam, you know what I'm saying, and live by, you know, is Islamic, you know, ways of life, um, I'm still open to, 
listen to other ways of life, yeah. life and other ways of thinking. And, and, and people got, start to be, realize we're like all that, different. Man. We're all different. And you can look at it as a good thing, you can look at it as a bad thing, but at the listen, end of the day, I tell people this, right? Different. There may be different ways of life, you know what I'm saying, but it's only one one way, it's only one way to be righteous. Mm-hmm. Feel me? There's only one way to be righteous. Right. So, you know, you can come from different could, the, 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 you can come from different sources. But there's only one way, way to be the righteous. You know what I mean? Right. So um man, it's too oh, we gotta wrap this up. I, I hate wrapping yeah, we do. Ah, man, it's been good. I got man. Them me. I, yeah, I know. I gotta pick one more time. Give the plugs and shout outs one more time, man. Up okay, on the it's the work sure couch trying to go part two. Part two, part get two. part one. Oh man, read this one first. Yeah, All right. they getting them. They, they <laughs> what? Part one is sound like flapjacks right now. So, uh, uh, man, let me tell you, I'm glad I had a box. I'm glad I had a box put up. Yeah, because they've been eating part one. Like part. Let's know that this coming out. This guy about to drop. <laughs> right, that's what it is. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, may not read, but guess what? It's enough excitement going on about this book. Yeah. Let me see what this is. Yeah. And guess what? I got you. You know what I'm saying? So don't knock it until you try. But uh, yeah, I got both of them on deck. You can hit me on Facebook or you go to Amazon or Kindle mm-hmm. and uh, get yourself a copy. And uh, we got the party tomorrow. I got the book signing tomorrow and it's going to go down. We got Bark the Ripper, my boy Big J. J, hey, shout out to Big J. In fact, J. Big uh, J is the first person to like my post this morning. It was like 6 o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah, that's morning. my man. <laughs> as soon as he's sitting, yeah, he's too light. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got my boy Gucci Mike flying there. Shout out to Gucci. Uh, he's down at ATL, right? Come from down at ATL. Yeah, he'll be here in the morning. Mm-hmm. And he'll be hitting, uh, you know, that's my boy. So, you know, we're going to get it on. We're going to get it on. That's what's up. That's we're what's gonna what's up. What's so. what's up. Is that uh, uh, Club Infinity? Right. On, um, on 100 Whitaker Avenue. Whitaker Avenue, which is, <laughs> mm-hmm. people don't know, that's Chambersburg right there off of, uh, Hamilton Avenue. Yes, sir. Right I think Hamilton and what's that uh, other side street? Hamilton and I don't know the other side street. Yeah, me, Hamilton. It's, and, it's, uh, it's Chambersburg, so Whitaker Avenue. Chambersburg. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the, uh, look for the traffic now. Yeah. Part of it because you get live. All go to the same yeah. place. Um, I want to thank you for coming out, man. I appreciate yeah, it myself, appreciate man. You, man. Thanks for having me. No I doubt, hope no I didn't know you was running this joint. I'm not running, but I, you know, um, I met Tanetta, and mm. uh, I love what she was doing. Mm. Uh, um, she was about, um, and it was easy. Mm-hmm. You, know, mm-hmm. you have to know when God sends you, mm. and you need to do what God is, is you know, right. commissioning you to do. Exactly. That's and right. so it was easy for me to say, sure, not a problem. Exactly. You know, even in the midst of finishing Pluto Target and knowing that, you know, just like you, you know, I'm pushing this through. Mm-hmm. Nobody's doing that thing but me. No, you know, no. He got it. This is a creep out. You know, I love you dearly. Um, uh-huh. And you know I'll be there. Right. Home. Okay. Um, you know, so it's just a matter of time. You just wait, wait for the television because I'm going to bring right. you. Okay. I got a couple things that we talked about. Right, right, right. right. That Netflix. Be really awesome. Right. Uh, to see you start moving in those circles. Yes. So, you know, it's a good thing. Definitely. I can't wait. Definitely. Yes. I can't so, wait. I, and it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm ready. It's so a lot of work. We'll pick up the book. But uh, well, thanks well, for well, having well, me. And uh, you know I mean? God bless everybody. Um, Enjoy your night. Party is tomorrow night. Club Infinity. <laughs> uh, real quick, as usual, shout out to my man, uh, Bless Child. Um, Stretch Got Radio, responsible for the uh, Blog Talk Radio. Um, shout out to Miss Howard and Miss Hope, you know what I'm saying, here at HAC. Howard's Healthy Choices, our new home for our podcast um, here at the Briggs Library. He didn't know where it was at. <laughs> well, I can say that he didn't know. But uh, yeah. that's cool. Though. A lot of people know the name of the library. This is the library on the corner. That's mm-hmm. it. The Old Briggs Library. The Old Briggs Library Tom here. And, and Green, um, Greenwood Avenue. Greenwood Avenue. Um, so just be on the lookout for everything. Make sure I'll be on the lookout for the new podcast from the kids yes. uh, here at the, uh, the HAC They're program. Getting We're getting ready. Yeah. Um, so we got a lot of things going on as well. Uh, appreciate y'all always tuning in. Um, shout out to everybody as usual. Um, Global Unlimited Podcast. We out. Peace. Peace and soul. <laughs> <laughs>